Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about STS mapping. STS stands for sequence tagged site. Sequence tagged site. Sequence tagged site. Now, what is an STS? An STS is a 100 to 500 base pair sequence, which is unique. This is the first quality. Second quality is it should be easily recognizable, recognizable, or in other words, detectable. And the third quality is its sequence should be known. Its sequence should be known. Now, how is this STS mapping done? Now, let us assume that you have fragments of a particular stretch of DNA. This is a stretch of DNA. And you know the sequence of this particular stretch. First comes A, then comes B, then comes C, then comes D, and the last one is E. Now, when you fragment this DNA, you'll be having several fragments. Let us say this fragment, this fragment, this fragment, this fragment, or you may even have fragments bigger than this. You may even have fragments bigger than this. Now, let us say, having known these markers, A, B, C, D, and E, you know the sequence of these markers. And once you know the sequence of these markers, you can design primers for the PCR. You can design primers for the PCR. And when primers can be designed, now you can have a matrix like this, a small table like this, which I'm drawing. For example, for the fragment one that you have generated, for the fragment one that you have generated here, that is this particular fragment, right? Let us say this is for fragment one. And you have the markers here, which you have amplified, A, B, C, D, and E. And when you amplify this, since this particular fragment has got A and B, it will be positive for A and B, right? And let us say you have fragment two. And since this fragment has got B and C, it will be positive for B and C. And since this fragment has got C and D, it will be positive for C and D when you amplify it. The third fragment, if you're talking about the third fragment, and it will be positive for, let us say, This is B and C. Second one is for B and C. And the third one, which we are talking about, will be positive for C and D. C and D. And you have a fourth one. And this is the fourth fragment, which will now be positive for C, D, and E. C, D, and E. Now you have a fifth fragment, which will be positive for A, B, and C, A, B, C, and D. You have a fifth fragment, which will be positive for A, B, C, and D. This is A, B, C, and D. Right? <clears throat> and now you have a sixth fragment here, which will be positive for C, D, and D. 
C, D, and E. So this sixth fragment will now be positive for what? Will be positive for C, D, and E. Right. Now, this is for the known set of markers on a stretch of DNA. You can easily amplify the respective PCR products and find out. Now, let us say we'll do a blindfold and we do not know we do not know the exact sequence of this particular DNA. And we'll rub all this off. And you have fragmented the DNA. And now you have got the amplification. Right? Just to make you understand, let us see how best we can now assemble these genes on a stretch of DNA. Now, what do you see? Wherever there is A, you have found B. And wherever there is B, you have found C. And wherever there is C, you have found D. And wherever there is D, you have found E. And once again, on a bigger fragment that we have taken, we have found A, B, C, and D together. Now, what does this mean? Means the first fragment says, a and B are together. The first fragment says that A and B are together. The second fragment says, so wherever there is B, you have found C. So second fragment says, wherever there is B, you have got C. And now the third fragment says, wherever there is C, you have found D. You have found D. Right? And similarly, the fourth fragment says that wherever there is C, you have found D as well, right? And whenever there is C here, you also had E and D together. So now it says that including this fourth and sixth, you can have that this fourth fragment can have both C, D and E together. C, D, and E together. Now, let's see whether this will fulfill the requirement. This particular fragment will fulfill the entire requirement. Now, what does this say? This says that A, B, C, and D are together. So it is A, B, C, and D are together. So it should be a bigger fragment here. So likewise, on the genome now, you can assemble this as A, B, C, D and this one, A, B, C, and D and E here, right? So this is what you can do with STS mapping. Now we'll look at a second example wherein we have five markers, P, Q, R, S, and T. And we know that we have primers for all these five markers. And these markers, now have to be mapped onto the chromosomal segment here, a bigger fragment that you see here. And you have to have the order of these markers on this segment. So what do we do first? We take this fragment, fragment this into pieces, smaller pieces. Let us say this is the first piece. This is the second piece, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth piece. Now, we amplify each of these fragments, the pieces, with all these markers. And let us assume we have a amplification positive and negatives as seen in the table. Means for fragment one, you have got a positive for P and you have got a positive for R. And similarly, for fragment two, you have got a positive for Q and a positive for S. And likewise, you have got the positives and negatives here for third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth fragments. Now let's start the mapping. See, for the first fragment, when you have got P here, right, this R here that is there that is positively amplified. Now let's check some other fragment, a bigger fragment, which obviously should have P here. And we have got a P here. And this, along with this P, we have also got a R here. 
So it means that since there is R here, there is R here, there's every possibility that after P on this chromosome, you may have R. We'll write it at the end, but only finally when we confirm across all the fragments, we'll write the, the marker sequence on the larger fragment. Right. The next thing is we'll have a look at the second fragment. When you looked at the second fragment, you have a Q here and you have a S here. Now, let us say you have a Q here and along with this Q, let us say you have a S here. Now, let's check. Wherever there is Q, there is S here. And wherever there is Q, there is S here. Yes, that's what we have got from the initial conclusion. Now, let's check the third fragment. In the third fragment, whenever there is Q, you have got a P now. Now, what does it say? That it says that probably this order that which we have written here should have been the other way around, placing Q here and place, placing S there, sorry, not Q, placing S here and Q here. If that is the order, that is the order. It means on the third fragment, you can have a Q and possibly a T here. And therefore, what you have, you have a, you have a Q here and as well as a T here in the third fragment. So this order that we have drawn at the top here is wrong. So we'll correct that order by writing the order as S and Q by looking at third fragment and also analyzing it along with the second fragment. Now we'll have a look at the fourth fragment. In fourth fragment, ideally, if you are coming across all this, you should have amplifications for PR, now S and Q as well. So you have PR, S and Q as well. This confirms, yes, we do have amplifications for PR, S and Q as well. Now we'll have a look at the fifth fragment. In the fifth fragment, ideally, you should have got amplification for what? For S, Q, and T as well. If at all, it covers all these markers. So let's have a look at this. Yes, it has got an amplification for Q. It has got an amplification for S. It has got an amplification for T. So till here, it's now confirmed that we have S and Q and T together on the fifth fragment. Now, finally, let us have a look at the sixth fragment. In the sixth fragment, if you are having a look at this, probably you should have R here, S here, and Q here, if your sequence is correct in all these fragments. Let's have a look, go back to the table and look. You have an R here, sorry, R here, S here and also a Q here. So now what do we have? R, S and Q here. So finally, we can draw the map on this particular fragment as P, R, S, Q, followed by P. This is how physical mapping is done by using STS mapping. However, for STS mapping, the primary requirement is getting the fragments or getting chromosomes right separately. So now, for doing STS mapping, we'll have to initially go in for separating the chromosomes or getting individual chromosomes. So we have three techniques here wherein you can get either fragments or chromosomes separately. Now let us look at chromosomes here. If you are looking at chromosomes, there are two methods by which you can get individual chromosomes. One is somatic cell hybridization. The one is somatic cell hybridization. And the other one is flow cytometry low cytometry, wherein you can get individual chromosomes. And having got individual chromosomes, you can now use your STS markers to amplify to find out the exact map all along the chromosomes after fragmenting your chromosomes. Now, you can get fragments as well. And this is normally caught by radiation hybrid mapping. What is this? 
radiation hybrid mapping. Before, before closing this STS mapping, you should also know the definition of an EST. Now, what is an EST? Expressed sequence tag. Expressed sequence tag is nothing but an STS located in the coding region. STS located in the coding region. In the coding region. What does this mean again? The sequence should be unique. Sequence should be unique. Second, easily detectable or recognizable. Recognizable or detectable. The third one, it should be known sequence. Sequence should be known. All these are the basic requirements of an STS. Besides these basic requirements, the fourth requirement that you would need for an ESTS, it should be located in the coding region. Right. In the next talk, we'll have a look at somatic cell hybridization and flow cytometry. Thank you.